Alright, so I just fixed an issue with this car that uh, I didn't know I had, but I had for quite a while, actually ever since we finished this project, and that was I had some crazy exhaust leak coming from my manifold where it mates to my wastegate. I don't know if you remember my previous setup, but I had top mounted my wastegates just literally for looks. The other one's back here, um, right there. So I did flange by flange, and I got Chinese... Uh, flange clamps and they were leaking so the exhaust that's coming out of these runners goes through your turbine which spins your turbo if you have pressure leaking between your manifold and basically the turbo it's not going to spin up as fast especially another thing i'm worried about is that i had exhaust leaking out <clears throat> so not all the exhaust was going through my o2 sensor so I got rid of the top mount setup. I got genuine tile clamps, which you should do. At the time, you know, I just saw eight bucks a clamp versus 25 bucks a clamp. I figured they'd be the same thing, but they're definitely, definitely not. These clamps are wider and they actually, they tighten this tile wastegate up against your, uh, your manifold. So there's virtually no leaks now. Not ideal. I had basically just made a pipe that shoots down. Um, but we fixed that problem. So spool up should be better. It sounds way better. I don't know if you heard any videos on social media of this car. It always sounded like there was like a nasty rattle or an exhaust leak. And it's because this one in particular, I have pictures of, you can you can visually see the exhaust leak when you take it apart. You could see where the black fumes were leaving the flanges. Um, I originally had it coming out and dumping out of this hole. And uh, it looked cool, I guess, but you could hear it. It was leaking. And if you put your hand underneath the, uh, the dump tube, you could feel the exhaust leak. So that issue is solved 100%. And I, uh, I talked to my tuner. I asked him, yo, now that I fixed this leak, we were tuning this car with major leaks that I didn't even know about. Now that I fixed this leak, uh, is there a chance that retuning it would be beneficial for at least the car's health? So I made some logs, some data logs. I did an idle, I did a regular drive, and I also did a wild throttle pull, which is all we care about in this video. So... This is the log for Haltech. I'm sure they're all different. I don't know. But we have here a manifold pressure. We have the RPM and we have the throttle position. So I just want to show you guys kind of a summary on how laggy this setup is. It's fun. Don't get me wrong. Like, I love this setup. I'm probably not going to change it. Um, but it is a super laggy setup. Like, that turbo on a 2 liter, uh, twin scroll or not, doesn't matter. It's so laggy. So I'm just going to show you how crazy it is. It sounds cool, it pulls hard, but it's not ideal. I'm not I'm not selling this to anybody saying this is the way to go. It's it's definitely not. Unless you're like me and you don't really care. So here. Manifold pressure. Right now, you can see that we're in a vacuum. We're at three thousand RPMs and we're just we're just feathering the throttle, like we're just cruising right now. So I had my girl in the passenger seat and I'm like, Alright babe, uh hit F six. F six on the Haltech with the laptop is log. So I mash the throttle. At about 3,200 RPMs. So now we're 100% wide open throttle right here. 3,500 RPMs and we only have 3 PSI boost. All right. So. Let's go forward. <clears throat> Let's go forward. Oh, I lost my mouse. Sorry. Let's go forward another 500 RPMs. We'll go to 4,000 RPMs. There it is. So now we're at 7 PSI. 4,000 RPMs, still at 100% throttle. Let's go forward another 500 RPMs. We're at 4,500 RPMs, and we're still not at peak boost. Peak boost is 18.9 PSI. 
I have a, uh, a manual boost controller right here. I'd like to hit 20 PSI. So I'll turn that in a little bit. I just want to talk to my tuner first. I sent this to him already, so I'm waiting on his, uh, his feedback. So 4,500 RPMs. We're still not at peak boost. We did double our RP, or our, sorry, we doubled our PSI. Over 500 RPMs, we doubled our PSI from seven to uh, past 14. So we're at 15 now. Still at 100% wide open throttle. And finally, we hit peak boost, 18. 9 PSI, 19 PSI. <clears throat> I'm trying to hit 20, but with the manual boost controller, it's literally up to me to just turn that knob precisely until I, you know, test it. Pretty much all you do is just turn it, go for a drive. If you're not hitting it, turn it a little bit more. It's not like an electronic boost controller where our boy Jeff Evans can just uh, turn the boost up for us. This is all up to us. So we hit peak boost at <laughs> 4,900. We hit peak boost at 5,000 RPMs. That's crazy. So we have a rev limiter in this car, uh, just for safety purposes at 7,000 RPMs. I know these RB20s love to rev. They can safely rev higher than that. But like I said, I'm not using this car for anything other than pleasure. So 7,000 RPMs is plenty. This thing sings. So we have 2,000 RPMs between 5,000 and 7,000 of peak boost. So that's, that's pretty much what the setup is. Peak boost on this car is at 5,000 RPMs. And we hit wide open throttle at 3,500 RPM. So it takes 1,500 RPMs to go from basically almost vacuum. Like when we first hit the throttle, we were at what, three PSI? So from three PSI to 19 PSI, we gained 16 PSI over 1,500 RPMs. I don't really have anything to compare that off of, but I do know that it feels laggy as hell. That's why it feels like such a surge when this turbo finally goes online. This is a second gen Cummins turbo, all set HX35. It's a uh, it's meant to be on a 5.9 <laughs> Cummins uh, diesel. So to put that in on RB20, that's a two liter six. I mean, yeah, it's got six cylinders, but that's not the point. It's how much air it flows. Uh, and this isn't modern technology like a Garrett would have spun faster. Um, there's plenty of turbos. I mean, I'm sure the Chinese turbos would be even more. Um, performance effective but it's kind of cool it was cheap and uh freshly rebuilt this turbo is gonna last forever but yeah laggy setup still very fun but just an update if you are having issues if you can hear air coming out around your your flanges on your wastegates or you can put your hand underneath that tube down there the dump tube while it's idling while it's still cold and you can feel air coming out something's not right you got to fix it you're giving up valuable performance. Like, um, I could go look up a log, like an old log, actually, <clears throat> of before I fixed this problem. And I want to compare it to now that I fixed the problem. I guarantee it's a slower spool up, and we might not even have the same boost pressure. So let's go check that real quick. Okay, so here's an old log. This is uh, back in March when I first got the car tuned with Jeff Evans. And this is back when I definitely had two external wastegate leaks, like major. And I'll include pictures in this video. Of what I'm talking about but so here you can see in this log it says peak boost was 18.2 but <clears throat> this is a third gear pull we barely even hit 18 psi so without touching the, the boost controller at all we go from 18 psi to almost 19 psi just by fixing exhaust leaks um, as for spool up, that's what I wanted to see. So right now, here we are at 12% throttle, wide open throttle, 4,000 RPMs, we're at 5 PSI, 4,500 RPMs. In our previous setup, I believe we we're at 15 PSI. We're only at 9 PSI now. And when we finally reach peak boost, which I guess in this case was 17 PSI, it's kind of an unfair uh, comparison because we're talking like almost two pounds of pressure difference, 5,100 PSI or RPMs is when we hit uh, this setup's peak boost. Right about there-ish. So I guess 100 RPMs we, uh, we saved by fixing that exhaust leak, but we also picked up, uh, I guess one pound, one full pound of pressure. So that boost is not only coming on slightly faster, 
but it's also coming on harder, I guess. And here's our boost controller, Grim Speed. All you have to do is turn it one way or another to get it to uh, adjust the boost pressure. So without touching that, <clears throat> we gained almost a full pound of pressure and about 100 RPMs, it looks like, uh, at the peak. But in the mid-range, like 4,500 RPMs, like I said, 4,500 RPMs, last time we were at 15 PSI, this setup we're at 10 PSI. That's 5 PSI difference. So, I mean, there's no reason to make a, a statement about like, oh, you got to fix your exhaust leak to fix your spool up. That's obvious. It's just whether or not you know they even exist. Like, I really didn't know. I always knew I had a rattle coming from my dump tube going out. Uh, I didn't really think anything of it until um, I listened to the videos and I was like, wow, that sounds like shit. And then I realized, well, that sounds like an exhaust leak. And I started my car up, put my hand underneath the dump tube, and I feel air coming out of it. And I'm so glad I took it apart just to inspect it to find out that all of my flanges were leaking. And uh, here's the other one back there. That one was leaking too. So now that they're low mounted, low mounted, leak free, and we're going to get a. Uh, our tuner's advice on whether or not we should get a retune. If it's healthy, he likes it, we're good. If not, we'll just tune and drive like we've been doing. This car is uh, definitely at least happier. So yeah, that's the uh, skyline as we got her now.